Blog Talk Radio. Gothier. The Enlightenment Evolution Hour is a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Not all opinions or views expressed on this show, nor by the guests of this show, are necessarily a reflection of the network. And with that note, we shall begin our show with a lot of amazing, amazing stuff. Now, today is going to be a freestyle day. That means anything you guys want to talk about, you call in. Area code 347-308-8788. Also, you can sign up for a free Blog Talk account network. Go to the links in the show that we share on Facebook. And you can get it by just going there. Now, I want to let you guys know a little something about uh, finding information, a future guest, past show archive, up to date. Also... The interviews of all the channelers, spiritual teachers that we have on our show and how to find that very easily. Until we get this network website up, uh, the best way to go look for anything about this show is by going to trebchanneling.com. That's T-R-E, B as in boy, and then the word channeling with two N's. Trebchanneling.com. Go to the far right tab on the home page to EEN Net- Radio Network. That's Enlightenment Evolution Network Radio Network. And then you go down to the second sub tab, which is Rob Show. You go there. I've completely revamped it. It gives a nice little description about what the show is, about the history of the show. Also has the, the next two scheduled upcoming guests. And then it has a little uh, fun video. It's got the posters for the show, and it also has every single archived video uh, or audio from this. Now, something else I want to share about tonight is tonight is a very, very special evening. This marks the 75th episode of the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. That means it's been over for a year and a half, about uh, give or take, obviously, for this show to have been on air and that's a very, very special thing. It's Well, it's been a little over a year, nonetheless. So, 75 episodes. It is today, October 29, 2014. If you want to go to com, feel free. It shows posters of my next two guests, and I've got two huge guests coming up. A uh, great spiritual teacher and a great channeler. Um, let's start off with our first guest on the Enlightenment Evolution Hour Wednesday, November 12, 2014, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time, we will have the one and only David Sarita. And David Sarita is a brilliant man. It talks a lot about how physics integrate with consciousness. Also has a lot of new work um, that I hadn't seen until I'd seen him on Portal2Ascension.org's new event that they just did Um which was just amazing, amazing stuff he shared. He's going to be coming on and talking. Um, He's now working with harmonic tones and how to open up the chakras better. He's had great reviews, um, also sent me some audio and some uh, book information. I've looked through it. It's amazing stuff. Also, we will have on November 26th, That's Wednesday, November 26, 2014 at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will have the one and only Lee Harris from Lee Harris Energy. If you don't know who he is, he's a world-renowned channeler. You go to YouTube and type in Lee Harris Energy, and you will find Energy Forecast. And in the last two years, his notoriety has come 
uh, very largely through those videos that he's doing as well as his channeling. Um, one of the most noted channelers and renowned channelers in the world. Very, very great interview uh, to be set up on that. And we'll also get a preview of some of his channeling too. So it will be amazing. That's the 26th of November. Um, it's going to be a blast. Now, we also have a, a lot of other things coming up on the show. Next Wednesday, we will be having the November Treb Channeling Special, which will include Treb and Aradith, and both of them will come on and chat next week, Wednesday. Uh, so it really, real, really will be amazing. Now, we are going to start getting uh, more guests on here. We are going to start connecting outward to more uh, people across the wider spectrum. Now, for me, in my own little niche and my own little um, energy that I've been playing with, so far what I've done on this show is basically interviewed the majority only channelers. Now, I understand that that's my excitement, but I also want you guys to connect to your excitement. And I know that not just having channelers on the show would necessarily be the greatest excitement for all of you, but I'm going to start getting people like David Sarita who teach. Um, and, and honestly, all of us are channeling, and channeling is a very tricky term in that sense. We have a lot of people who are channeling all the time about lots of different things, and we end up not seeing it for what it is because the way I channel, because the way Daryl Anka, Lee Harris, Jeffrey Hoppy, Wendy, Nora, uh, Daniel, uh, all these people who are channeling channel in a very specific way. So in that specific way, most people tend to put that energy into what is channeling, what's going on with that specifically, and that's kind of something that they look into as channeling. But in reality, every excitement that we have is channeled. When we're sharing information with anyone about anything that we're excited and we're in that super high, um, some people call it vortex energy or super high excitement, that super high resonant spot in your heart and mind, that is channeled. When you're giving profound information and it seems like you just don't understand where it's coming from, the mechanics of that is actually very simple. Ardip and myself have been talking about this for a while. He's giving me some very in-depth information about consciousness integration from the smallest portions of atomic all the way through into the physical state, how consciousness is integrated. And basically what we deal with is the higher fractalized consciousness, which is what most people deem the higher self, that part of us who is uh, closer to the oversoul, the part of us that when we die in the physical body, that's the part we embrace. We're still a fractalized consciousness. We're still one part of the oversoul, but that's the highest version of us. That true self, that high self, that is where we bring the information through, and we do it from quantum physics. And quantumly, these small portions of atoms are grouping up, making geometric, geometric patterns, and exchanging information via the geometric pattern-shaped small atomic particles. And... Obviously, there's a lot of science that goes into this. There's a lot of energy that goes into this. And when um, both of these things are integrated, we're able to connect to those portions that are the higher version of ourselves. And every single one of us do that. There is no exception of people in this world who channel their higher self. Now, some people shut that off for a while. Um, a lot of people go through depression. A lot of people who go through... Um, uh, problems in relationships, a lot of people go through addictions, all of those things can kind of shut that mechanism to its lowest setting. It never shuts it off completely, but to its lowest setting where it doesn't feel like we're getting that. But even for people who are going through that, uh, when, you're, when you're getting ready to um, separate a friendship or getting ready to separate a relationship, there can be excitements of things in that even. Even if it's sick and sadistic and revenge-oriented, there's still parts of that that come through. And in your moment, that is from the higher part of yourself. And 
It's not that the higher self is wicked and evil. What it is is an excitement will bring energy from higher understanding and higher knowing. So you have a chance to turn that around and stop and say, wow, through this nasty energy I'm, I'm feeling, it got me excited enough to bring through a profound thing. And usually in those moments, that's when you find serenity. You could say, well, through my nasty thought process, I'm able to finally see the mechanism of why this relationship's crumbling, why I feel the need to be addicted, why I feel the need to do anything that's self-destructive in behavior or um, not very good for you to get into energetically. So all of these things have a place. All of those places have energy, and all those energies are always exchanged, and they're exchanged from the highest portion of ourselves. Now, those of you who channel in that way, there are more more levels above that in channeling. Then we have people who have intuition, and that's the intuitive channeling. That's the part of yourself that's in the higher echelons of the higher self. That's still channeling from higher self, but just the higher layer of that higher self that really, really understands the deeper prospects, the deeper uh, thought processes. And in that, we're often able to turn on our first layer of psychic ability. And that psychic ability really is a beautiful thing. Um, It's where we can understand things without digging, without um, being mental or logical about it. Um, We always have to use our heart. That's the big thing. We always have to use our heart in that area. So as we start doing those things, we build up more tolerance. And there's several layers. People get into their highest excitements of art. They get into their artistic views. They get into their artistic selves. And in that, they find a way to channel through um, all sorts of things. They get a way to channel through art, uh, music. They get their actual drawing and their actual playing. A lot of musicians, when you speak to them, they'll say, I was performing and I lost myself in the music. I was performing and I didn't have to do any effort to make the music flow. That's also part of channeling. Um, I myself am am very excited about channeling, but also want to bring more excitements to you guys in any way that you guys are excited to learn and excited to co-create. Again, this is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Um, Tonight's a freestyle night. Give me a call. Tell me what's on your mind. It doesn't matter what you're thinking. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Anything's accepted on tonight's night, and we'll just talk it through. Area code 347-308-8788. I wanted to also talk about a couple things that were coming up. Uh, Okay, well, we've got a caller. Let's, Let's take a caller. You got your hand up. Also, if you call in, please hit number one on your dial pad. That way it will bring you through for the conversation so I know that you are wanting to connect in the conversation. So we'll take the first caller, area code 774. Who do we have with us this evening? 774? All right, 774. uh, If you're hearing me and you didn't want to talk, that's fine. Um, if you wanted to share something with us, just let us know. All right, so we'll uh, put that call on hold then, and we'll go back to uh, the next caller. All right, um, yeah, so basically it's a freestyle night. Anyone who calls, that's fine. Uh, make sure that you dial... One to get on. Uh, We have a few callers in the queue. One to get on. So, uh, like I was saying before, uh, through the the show, I bring my excitements of channeling. I've reached out to almost every world-renowned channeler, and a lot of them have accepted. That's why I've done what I've done. Um, I I want to appeal to people in their excitements, too. For instance, this, to me, is a lot like with Daryl Anka. Daryl Anka channels, most of you guys know him, but one of his greatest excitements is his Zia film work that he does. He does a lot of work in Zia films, um, and he also does channeling. Both of those are high excitements for him. Um, the Zia film thing is is his non-channeled excitement, and in that non... 
Yeah, in that, um, yes, Jessica, I, I read you loud and clear. That was uh, um, a very unique energy in that, absolutely. So, basically, um, for him, Zia Films is a huge excitement. For me, this show is my excitement. As much as I love channeling Treb, as much as I love channeling Aridip, as much as I love channeling in general, uh, this show brings forth my excitement. And that's something that all of these channeled entities have told us over and over and over again, is to bring forth your excitement, and in that energy, the excitements will manifest other things. So that's what we're doing here today, and through co-creating in your own experience, I'd love to hear, any of you who are listening, I'd love to hear what your excitements are. And that's what tonight's about, giving a call, sharing excitement, sharing issues um, that might be negative in your life right now, sharing hardship, sharing experiences, or just calling and say, hey, I like to eat fruit. <laughs> Whatever is on your mind and thought process today, it's allowed to talk about. And don't be shy. Uh, the greatest thing about sharing is that you able to reflect within yourself and being able to reflect um, being able to reflect all other things so that's what tonight's show about I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit too and reminding anyone who wants to ask questions we got more callers filling up none with their hands up all you have to do is hit one if you're on Skype and you want to hit one, there's a little plus button on the bottom where you would mute your microphone or hang up the call. You would hit that, and, and then the uh, option comes up where you hit the dial pad. Then you can hit the dial pad and then hit one. It's a very complex way. The new Skype's a little off, um, but it is what it is. So, um, yeah, and I, I lost my total track of thought there. Let's go to things that are up and coming for Trev Channeling that are also within my excitement. We've got a couple big events coming, still working on the Channel Panel 2, which will be in Los Angeles. It'll be live, and it will be in Los Angeles. And in that event, um, we already have Lee Harris coming, and we also have um, Wendy Kennedy coming. Those two have accepted and will be there. And obviously myself will be there. And in that excitement, that brings one one opportunity. We also have another event coming up that I think will be in early December, and that will be a local event for myself. I'll be channeling live in Kalamazoo, $30. I should have details with that in the next week. It'll be 30 bucks. You come in, you watch, you hang out. Uh, it'll be a nice three-hour event with just us hanging out. And then what we're going to do also is having an event in Asheville, North Carolina. And this is going to be the one that we did last time, um, which will be CE5, three days. More stuff's coming up on that. I do have a caller, and I'm going to take that um, caller that is from... Um, Skype, last name Mark1. I won't read the whole name out. Uh, who do we have with us tonight? Hey, Rob, it's Mark in Australia. How are you? Mark, how are you doing, brother? I'm really well. And you? I'm doing great. Uh, what's on your mind tonight? Hey, it's great to talk to you. Oh, I know. Um, it's always well... great to speak. <laughs> it is. Hey Rob, I wondered whether you know, of course, that I'm I'm still working on um, building up to having um, a, a conscious channeled connection uh, myself with some some of the entities that I'm you know interested in connecting with, and um, I'm kind of I'm having you know a, a range of experiences as I work through that, but I thought it might be beneficial to hear what you actually experience as you go through your process, your equalization, your arming. And and then ultimately, when you sort of like um, jump out of the driver's seat and, and uh, step to the, step aside, so to speak, what you actually experience, how it feels, um, just I just thought hearing those ideas might actually um, build a better connection for myself. You know what to look for. I know I know that everyone's experience is different, but um, you know get, getting the inside perspective on what it's like to go through that process where you actually do get through um, would be really helpful. 
Well, absolutely, and that's, that is actually a very common question I get, and it's so hard to elaborate on the larger mm. idea because as I'm channeling, as my connections change, so does the process mm. in which I connect. Now when uh, I connect to art, if it's a totally different process connection, although it sounds very similar externally, internally it's a much different process. So let me explain mm. uh, first and most how it is now. And if you want to go through the evolution of that too, by all means we can uh, talk about the evolution in the last five years of the difference in the channel mm. state from the very beginning to the end. How would you like to approach mm. that? Oh, um Probably um, the, the basics of how you made the original connection. You know, it sounds like you've gone a long way with it, and it's very exciting what you're doing now. But from my perspective, it's probably more important to understand the, the first stages of connection. Okay, absolutely. Now, first of all, what I experience in the channeled state. This is something that I share with a lot of people frequently. It's very uh, publicly. Uh, known by by many people. I, I've talked about it on a lot of the radio shows and a lot of interviews. But what I experience in the channel of the state is when I connect to Treb, Treb comes in through my body, my consciousness or a portion of my consciousness is projected. So it's like an astral projected state. And mm -hmm. in that astral projected state, I am connected to Treb. Um, if I channel 20 times, then probably 17 out of those 20 times I'm sitting with Treb and talking. Or maybe 16 mm. out of 20 times I'm, I'm chatting with Treb. Three out of 20 times I would be seeing something in a visualization that he is showing me. Sometimes he shows me events. Sometimes he shows me timelines. Sometimes he shows me different entities like um, ETs from other planets, um, animals, mm -hmm. plants. And then uh, sometimes he just shows me uh, anything that he feels is important for me to know in the future. Now, that leaves mm. one out of 20 left, and it's less than one in 20. It's probably realistically more like one in 50. But one mm -hmm. out of every 20 times, let's say, then what I'll do is I will either observe the session, if there's something in there that I energetically have to feel, um, mm -hmm. then what happens is I, it's like I'm sitting and listening, but from a deep meditative state far away. And it's mm -hmm. like a conversation with words and energy at the same time. Now, that's what I experience in the trance state. But to get up to the trance state, in the very, very first part of my energy, when I started mm -hmm. working with Treb, I started talking to all of these channelers. I started uh, reading up online about how to channel. And one thing I learned was that before channeling, you have to be in a very neutralized or positive state. There were two schools of thought. Um, both of those sounded good, but neutral was what most people were saying, and it's what felt mm -hmm. right to me. If you're going to allow consciousness of an external nature to come into you, you have to be neutral so that information comes out clear. So that's what I worked on. When I first started channeling, even if it was a 20-minute session, I would spend one hour preparing for it every day. What that meant is that in that hour before my session, I had to stop mm. everything I was doing. I had to be in, uh, pretty much I, I had to put myself in a solitude. I had to have quiet, serene, and I had to meditate for an hour. Now, during these times, I did a lot of ch uh, ritual things. I did my oming. I did uh, my Beyond 21 state, which is a process where you count to 21. It's like a self-hypnosis to get you into a super deep state. After that, mm -hmm. I would do several little techniques that I learned along the way, like the uh, light circle, the blowing energy, but I mean all of these ritualistic things. And then after mm -hmm. that, I would go into silence, and I would just focus in on Treb's energy. There was a star mantra that he taught me in which I repeat a specific pattern of stars that I would choose, stars that were resonant to me, and then we put them in an order in a song. Um, so it would be like, Capella, and then I would chant mm. that over, and I would do all of the stars, including uh, Jupiter and Venus, which was one uh, tone of the mantra, but put them together. And then... After that, I would stay in silence, and I would feel his energy. I would visualize on his constellation. And once I had it pictured in my mind completely, which took me about 15 minutes back then, 
I would be able mm. to zoom in further and further on his star. And once I focus on his star, um, I would just keep that focus there for the last 15, 20 minutes of my meditation. Once that was achieved, I would go straight to the computer and then I would come in uh, to connect with Treb. Now, sometimes I had to ohm. And the ohming, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Sometimes I had mm -hmm. to ohm, sometimes I didn't. Um, but sometimes I could just sit there, breathe, and go right into a trance. But most of the time I had to ohm. Now, the reason mm -hmm. to this day that I still ohm, when I am ohming, my upper chakras start vibrating very strongly. Now, the bottom three chakras for almost every human being in this world vibrate naturally at a higher level than the top ones because this is where we're still at in our evolution. Um, even <laughs> if we're having blockages in the first three, they're still vibrating higher than the top ones because we're not pulled into that energy yet. Every mm. uh, specific uh, evolution level that you're raising, you're also going through that chakra energetically, activating it, um, if you will. And in that activation, we've already mastered first density. We've all been elements. We've all been rocks and water and fire. And mm -hmm. that's how the earth coalesced. That's how it's created. Second chakra, we already went through our animal stage, even though we were cut short of that. And that's why mm -hmm. still to this day, so many people have problems with their second sacral chakra, sexual energy, excitement, all of that. And that comes from the lack of development of natural evolution as a second density entity. And mm -hmm. for some reason, I just received that intuitively. It's the first time I've ever um, made that correlation there. And mm -hmm. in that uh, second chakra, uh, we mastered it to a degree. And the third chakra being a human. Well, we've graduated from being that third density human. Now we're going to fourth. This is why our heart's starting to activate. When I own, you'll hear my tones going up and down. When I'm going up and down, I'm tapping into a different chakra. First of all, mm. it's one ohm at somewhat of the same level. My my sound waves don't go much over and under one specific tone. Oh, mm. and that activates the heart chakra very quickly. The heart chakra now, back then it took a lot longer. Then I move to the throat chakra, oh, and that's when I'm going up and down. That's the hardest chakra for myself to activate. You'll hear me go, oh, mm. I'm going up and down until I can get the right vibration in my throat chakra, then mm. my crown, mm. or then my third eye, then my crown. It was practice. It was give and take. It was playing around with energy so that we could maintain uh, a level together. Once I activate my crown chakra completely, it's right there. I'll stop doing my oming. I'll breathe, doing the dragon breath, which is the very fast. <laughs> and once yep. that happens, then boom, Treb's in, I'm up, and he takes over from that point. I'm already absent. What I'm doing is after I vibrate my heart, my throat, my third eye, and my crown, then I'm taking all the chakras in my body, I'm moving them from the bottom up, so I go first to second, take all the energy from the first one, put it in the second, take all that collected energy from first to second, put it in my third, and I continue to go up until it's in my crown. I let it sit in my crown, and then once it starts expanding, and almost boiling over in energy, I release it. I release it into the eighth chakra, which goes out to the galactic consciousness, which then connects to Treva, and that's the process. It was the process then, it's also the process now. Back then, it just took so much longer to get there. Now, I cut out all of the ritualistic stuff that I didn't need, all the visualizations, all the mantras. I just use the vibrating, and that's how I pull up. I use the breathing before the vibrating so that my body can go into what I call the beyond 21 state, which is basically where I'm putting my body mostly to sleep and my mind awake so that when I start oming, there's no resistance. I before I do any of the oming or any of the breathing, I have to neutralize my energy. And when I neutralize my energy, that is me doing just what we talked about before, getting everything set up so that the energy can come through. Once that happens, boom. That was my beginning process up till kind of now. And there was a huge evolution with many steps in between, but that's the basic uh, idea of the whole thing. Fantastic. The um, 
the idea I hadn't I hadn't drawn that connection with the oming and the actual moving up and down through the, the chakras, but I, you know, and I've, I've only been oming a little bit here and there for a while just to ex- experiment with it, but um, um, I was finding I was starting to get um, intuitively get hints that that's sort of what it was about because um, I was finding with certain with certain vibrations seem to shake things loose if, if you know what I mean sure. uh, things that are yeah tight and and uh, but I, I didn't realize it was such a systematic process and I, and I guess a question that comes out of that is some others don't seem to 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 do the um, the, the old, I mean I, I think um, um, when Daryl anchor for example comes Bashar comes through um, he's just uh, uh, breathes him in it seems um, I'm sure he's already equalised himself, but but you know sometimes he's chatting to people and then he just sort of he just sort of closes his eyes, um, a bit of breathing, and sort of Bashar Bango he, he comes through. So it, it does that indicate that 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 process that you're using is is um, something that, that that's that's uh, very much for you, or um, and, and there are other ways. Because uh, you said you used rituals, and, and then you put them, put them. They were sort of like stepping stones, or permission slips, if you like, and you, you, you use them to build and build and build, and then you, and then you let them go as you mastered that that idea. Um, do you think sure. that that many that, that, that you know everyone can develop their own process, or do you, do we all need to go through a, a kind of a ritualized setup to to find our feet? No, actually, and that's the beautiful thing about <coughs> what I was talking earlier about how my personal excitements on this show was to interview so many channelers. Um, you know, you can listen to as much channeled work as you want, but you're never going to get the the types of questions that I ask with these people. And one of the, the things I ask is their process and the energy involved with it, because to me that's very interesting. And, you know, uh, most people won't spend their time or money when they have these people in their reins, these people who you pay a lot of money for their time, they don't want to ask questions like that because they're busy focused on their own personal development. I am afforded that opportunity because we're having fun and we're doing a show. So I yeah. ask them. I, I talked to Lee Harris just recently about his process. It's just as different um, from mine as it is to uh, Jeffrey Hoppy and Wendy Kennedy and Nora Harold. Every single channel I've ever met started differently than the way they are now in their connection process and Mm -hmm. they all have a different connection process. Some people now are to the point, especially with conscious channelers, uh, Nora Harrell described it perfectly, as I breathe for a moment until I feel neutral or until she feels relaxed and, and at peace and then she goes into her heart center. And when she goes into her heart center, there's where the channeling is. That's way different than what I experience. I'm trying to work with yeah. conscious channeling, and that's a whole new beast. I mean, that is a yeah. whole new pro. That is literally making myself step out of the way. Trans channeling is easier in that way. You don't have to step out of the way. You just have to be neutral, and then you disappear for a while, <laughs> and then these entities come through, and they have uh, conversations, and 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 you do have to step out of the way. So maybe that's not a fair assessment. You do have to get out of the way because my first, the very first channeling I ever recorded, which I've listened to recently, and it's so funny how filtered I was in the beginning. And that happens mm. with so many new channelers. They're channeling from their perspective, but this energy comes through, and it can't get through all that filtering, so it brings <laughs> forth a culmination, because that's what channeling is. When you hear Treb, you're hearing Treb and myself. Now, it mm. depends on how much of myself I let go of that day in order for him to bring his message through. But in the most clearing channels you hear, that's about an 80-20 amalgamation. 80% Treb, 20% me. In the very mm. beginning, it was more like 20% Treb, 80% me. <laughs> and that's... You do have to get out of the way, even in trance, but you have to learn to be at ease with yourself in order for that energy to go through. I know a lot of people who are starting to channel now who were uh, students of channeled work years ago when I first started and are getting into the the parts where they've dedicated that time, dedicated mm-hmm. the effort long ago, and now they're being able to, to bear the fruits from that. So it is a beautiful and profound experience 
to actually have these people uh, going through that excitement and, and seeing how they're translating. And that's something that, that we really do need, is we need a community where we're able to exchange these ideas willingly. But the problem is that there are so many channelers right now, but so mm. few of them are publicly notarized. So few of them are in that limelight uh, where they're being accepted by a lot of the world at once. So you have all these great channelers who have all of this great insight and all this information, but they're never getting the chance to be seen. They're never getting the chance for me to be aware of them yeah. while I'm on the show and say, hey, now how do you do this? And that's the problem. I suggest yeah. going through channeled work on YouTube. Find some of these mm -hmm. less-known channelers, the people who are getting 100 uh, views on their channel per video, things like that, or 50. And then if it resonates with you, contact them. When I first started, I had so much time that I was willing to give out to the public because it wasn't overwhelming then. Um, now, yes. you know, hundreds yeah. of emails per day, things like that. It gets very busy. And now the only time I have is to do my channel. This is why I love this uh, radio show because this is my time for free time for me to be able to talk to people in the way I used to, being able to talk to them and give them advice or get advice from them and just exchange beautiful ideas. So yeah. suggesting the, the people who are less known, talk to them too. Find out what they're doing. And you you're going to listen to 20 different channelers and one of them will give you something that will feel so correct and so right, mm. you will try it and it will instantly click. And you'll know it. As soon as you hear it, you'll know what it is that's going to work for you. One thing I heard you say when you said moving up and down the chakras, what I suggest mm. for this, and this is just in my experience and yeah. uh, a few other people who I've met, when you're moving energy from chakra, try not to go from the higher chakras down. Go from the first chakra to the seventh. Don't, mm, don't go that, up yeah. and down, just go up. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good idea. Excellent, excellent. I think um, it seems to me, Rob, that the channeling, um, if enough, I, I believe a lot of people are going to become interested in it and, and it's going to become like an overwhelmingly um, large group. Um, the idea that you know everything you seem to be doing is all about building networks and creating space for this to happen. And uh, I think it might take many years but, or a few years, but I, I think that there'll be just a, an overwhelming wave of it that will challenge the collective consciousness to, to open up a bit and look at things differently. So it won't be so much obscure people in the corner of the, of the Internet um, uh, you know, struggling to find a, a venue or a, an opportunity. I, I just, but, but I think it'll come with weight of numbers as well as the other aspects. I think it'll build over time. Does that sound... Does that resonate with what you're thinking? Absolutely. I see it happening right now. When I first started channeling publicly, I was only out there for six months. And when you typed in the word ET channeler, I was the first result in YouTube. Now you type mm -hmm. it in, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've got, uh, sometimes I get a big head when it comes to my channeling because I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited about it and I've done so well for such a little time that I've been there. But I've been able to yeah. co-create with some of the greatest names out there today, some of the biggest names out there, and I'm still on like maybe the 12th or 13th page when you type in the word ET channeler, and that's in the keyword yeah. of all my videos. So it's getting more commonplace than once it was, but you're right, it's still in that small niche community where there's not as big as a call for it as there was or as there will be in 10 years. Now, something that myself, Lee Harris, and Nora, on two separate conversations when we were talking, we talked about the 2012. This caused a large wave in the channeling community. There were so mm -hmm. many channelings out at that time that had told people that during 2012, during the solstice in December, that things would change exponentially that the changes of the outside world would come to save them and that they would be put in a place of paradise or the ETs would land 
the ETs would force contact, open contact. There were so many ideas out there about what December was that in all honesty, a lot of the people who at one time loved channeled information stopped listening to it altogether. This put yeah. a very yeah. large dent in the energetic work that we try to do now because a lot of people who did have hope for that abandoned their hope in channeling. And it's not that channeling should be held on a higher level. This information is in all of us. There's no one in this world who cannot access the same thing that we're getting through in this channeling. It just takes time. It takes effort. It takes. It doesn't always take time and effort, and that's that's kind of mm. a bad belief system that that I have. But uh, it it does. It can take time and effort. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Look, my thoughts on on that idea of of um, you know uh, I, I, I've seen lots of information as well where people are making predictions about. Um, uh, ETs coming, uh, appearing within our dimension, and you know, and, and all the, the wonderful things that will go on with that. But I'm sort of of the view, and what I've been taught, that, um, that you know, there are infinite parallel realities that we can sort of energetically step into um, if we're able to. And um, who knows? Maybe in some of those d dimensions, so to speak, um, those kind of things were realised for some people. But we're we're in the one that we find ourselves in, and and, and um, um, so all you can do, I think, is just to to keep working as best you can as you are um, to to you know co-create a reality with the versions of others that are vibrationally right there with you in the moment. I I, I think you hit that one right on the head. There's a lot of people. Um, who right now just need to find themselves, and, and in whatever way they can, that is something uh, that is very important. And I don't, I was going to get a little further into myself and Lee's conversation, but I don't want to run any future forecasts for, for what me and Lee <laughs> will be talking about on the 27th show. I want to keep that kind of a surprise thing, but what we are doing in this time with the channelers, we are trying to get people to look inside themselves. At least most of the channelers who, I, who I've who i co-created with and who work with, what mm. the channeled information is, is for people to look in themselves, find the information, and find their own power. And that is so important. And a lot of people through channeling do one of two things. They either take it they absorb a bunch of it, and then they have trouble applying what's being said into their lives to make their lives a little easier, less resistant, which is something that all of us do. It, it's, I mean, me yeah, myself, yeah. Uh, for the first couple of years I channeled, I was only integrating a portion of what I was hearing. Once I started implementing those things in my daily life, that is when true excitement came because I was really able to do things. But... So this is one version of the channel. And the other people with channeling, um, they mm. just use it as the mantra of what their heart already knows to be true. And it, mm. they don't necessarily put it in in a stack and give such importance to it that nothing else is heard or nothing else is experienced. Some people live by channeling so strictly, they'll follow one or two channelers that resonate with them, and it's almost becoming their guru. They almost will not do anything unless this channeler says to do it, or and, and that can yeah. be a very unhealthy balance, too, because then instead of giving away your power um, to whatever uh, the case is, you know, some people with the Illuminati, some people with addiction, some people with depression, instead of giving your way life away to fear or disconnection you give it away to someone else's teachings and that's something that as a channeler a lot of people are not used to hearing me talk about you know hey listen don't listen to me all the time don't listen to treb all the time don't li listen to what they yeah, say yeah. and if it feels right then listen to it and take it in their truth uh, you hear treb and narrative and you you've got to experience this too the difference in their perspectives, the difference in their energies, mm. you also feel the similarities, and their similarities um, are similar to mine, where all three 
having more amalgamation as the time goes through a consciousness. And we're also mm-hmm. linked energetically because we're connected. But in that same way, everyone has their own perspective and their own truth. Not every channeled entity is right 100% of the time. They're only mm-hmm. right 100% of the time from their truth, from their experience, from their perspective. Yeah. And we each have that. I think, it, to me, it, it seems that it depends on, on what their particular... I mean, that there's the core information, and then there's their areas of interest, it seems, uh, things that they're passionate about in, in a given moment. But um, it, with the core stuff, um, what I've sort of realized is that it's all essentially... Um, if it'll, the stuff that aligns with me, at least, is all essentially the same message, and it's very, very simple, and it, it can be lost. It's just the idea of, of in whatever situation you're in looking for the 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 um the next step forward that's most exciting and if if you only, if you can only see three crappy things choose the, the least crappy one but basically it's to keep going towards excitement and the other part of it is to release uh anything that that does not resonate or represent who you truly are on the inside but to to know what that is it does require just to go in and to to believe the idea that you're, we're, we're pure high vibrational white light in, uh, source energy, if you like, at our core, and we can't add to that, but but we can we can actually mask it or block it, and it, it's all about taking away those blockages to reveal who we truly are. So that idea of releasing resistance, coupled with the idea of of um, your highest calling or your highest um, excitement, always lays in, in, in going for whatever presents itself that uh, you find exciting in the moment. It, as I said, even if it's not particularly um, pretty uh, because you've, worked, you've created circumstances where there aren't that many pretty options um, by your past believings, um, even so, those two things, you know, releasing resistance, remembering who you are, going for your highest excitement, that's the message that everyone needs to, um, to hang on to and let all the other stuff just be information. Uh, I find a lot of the stuff that comes through, you know, very interesting, but but in the moment very interesting and sometimes practically helpful, but not always. But 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 always expansive. You, you grow through hearing it. But if you ask me the next day to to to, to explain to you what I thought I heard, you, you might be disappointed because I may not remember very much of it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, so, um, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, so, so so in terms for me, you know, the idea of pursuing channeling, it's actually what you've said a couple of times, you know, stepping out of the way um, in the process. That's what I really see it as and, and, and what I find exciting is is the idea that I, I could at some point, someone, you know, I could, I could be working with someone I could, and I can say, look, you know, opinions are, are plentiful and I, I can give you mine if you want, but I'd rather step aside and, and let you hear from, you know, the highest aspect of myself or another entity, um, as you do, you know, you connect through to entities that directly relate to the individuals who are working with you in that moment, um, and for, so they will get the best possible uh, information available at that time, specific to you know what they're going through. And the channel doesn't really need to know anything necessarily about that, and it doesn't even have to have an opinion on it. I think that's beautiful. Well, absolutely, and and that's that's a beautiful thing. And for those of you who are just listening, I'm here talking with Mark. He's coming in. We're talking about the channel material, how it's affected things. If you guys want to call, too, join in on the conversation by all means. Area code 347-308-8788. We've also opened up the chat, which is something I'm trying to get used to uh, as a new, newer feature of the Blog Talk Radio. But if you go to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour page on Facebook, you type in the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, go to the page, click on the link, the chat will be right below it. You could call in. You could call in from Skype, which is also at the same link. Join us in on our conversation as me and Mark continue talking about it. Now, do you mind, Mark, if I ask you a question about sure. uh, some of your experiences? Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, what, what's what been your – since you began to, to try uh, to integrate channeling, to try mm. to integrate um, your own conscious connection – what are some of the synchronicities? What are some of the dreams? And what are the, some of the sensations and feelings that you've received that you never had before? Mm. Um, it's been quiet on the dream front in recent times. Um, I, 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 
as you know, I've, you know, I have a lot of have had a lot of a lot of lucid type dreams in the past, and that, that's involved sure. um, c- connecting with um, entities, reptilian entities, and the like. And I was became interested um, through those dreams. That's kind of how what led me to yourself. The fact that you connect to Trev, and I thought, well, here's an opportunity to explore some of these ideas. You know, um, going in the astral place with, uh, with, with beings that were looking human, but but they were actually shape shifting, and they were reptilian in nature. You know, you hear all the negativity, um, um, which I, I guess you know is valid to a degree because 85 odd percent of reptilian energy isn't particularly Type One, um, that loving type. I'm, you know, I understand from what you've said. But um, I wanted to explore all of that, and um, through that, I, I came to to, to uh, understand, you know, where Treb's coming from in his heart, and and how beautiful he is, and and that that generated an interest. Um, so I see the dreaming as being an actual pathway into this idea of channeling. And then I thought to myself, you know, I'm sort of I've been around a while. I'm, I'm in my fifties, and I thought, well. You know, I, I've tried my best to, to serve and help people over a long period of time, but the best I can I can ever give them is my filtered understandings. You know, um, heart speaking through the, the 3D experience and channeling is a way to, to step beyond that and to, uh, to step aside, as we were saying, and allow um, uh, much more to come through, much more of the higher self and other other entities. And it, I think it'll be. I know that you're, you're talking to um, now. You just started talking to the knee. How do you say it, Rob? The knee. Nihal. Uh, N i h a l. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so and so there's a progression there happening with yourself, and and um, you'll no doubt be um, have access to not much just more information, but I think you know what came through from what I heard you you speaking of there was that you're actually tapping into a different level of energy, a far more expansive. Um, I don't know if powerful is the right term, but it's certainly a far more expansive and um, expressive type of energy. And, and, and in bringing, uh, in going through that process of, of evolution, you know, Treb, fit the density, um, Aradif, and then beyond now to the Nihal, you know, where is the limit to this and, and, and how can it, you know, what is it that you're ultimately bringing in that, that, that will help us to, all to evolve? And, um, and of course, you know, anyone who gets interested in that kind of thing says, well, what can I do to help? Where, where can I dovetail in with this? What, what Can I play a part in this co-creation and make it even more than it would be if I didn't? And um, so I find all that stuff, you know, really exciting. As to what I personally experience at the moment, um, mostly um, I'm just... I'm just sort of like still in the stage of clearing the energetic static in, in, in that meditation space, um, holding my... Um, uh, focus um, is an issue at times. Um, being human, <laughs> um, you know, uh, clear, clearing <laughs> out the, um, <laughs> clearing out the, you know, clearing a space, so to speak. But, you know, uh, drawing in, bringing back all my energy that I've scattered all over the place. You know, when I'm not in my super spiritual mode, and uh, pulling all that back together, and, and trying to have as much energy in the moment as I can. But you know, I, I fully believe that in, in the right time, it'll open up and. Um, and I think also that that when when we're passionate about something, of course, we attract others to us. And not necessarily that they're going to be that they are automatically as passionate about what we are, but they're interested in why we're passionate. And 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 some of those people, and I think you know the majority perhaps of those people, because they have been drawn, will be the people who decide that they want to be involved in some way and, and contribute, and even. Not necessarily at the level of necessarily of channeling, but 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 in the at the level of perhaps being open to receive that information, and, they, and then in, as they move about, they share that information just by being who they are, and just by, by the fact that they hold that energy um, and believe in it. Um, so I, I can see it all expanding through a whole range of levels of people, um, and I, I think it's the the idea of it to me is is the purest expression that's available to us um, of um, of what is out there and what and what can be had. Um, intuitive information um, is great, but I, I just get the sense, and you, you can tell me if you don't agree, but I do get the sense that it's a, it's a little bit more difficult for it to be um, uh, less filtered. It's um, it's, it's got to pass through more filters. 
and of course that you know that does you know rub the edges off a bit kind of like what we were just saying about when you first start channeling how it was an 80 20 but it's round the wrong way you know so um and that's not to decry you know intuitive information it's just it's just that i see the, the once you a person does um give themselves over to the idea of channeling and is able to step aside it, it just logically it, it, it means there's going to be a, a clearer a clearer avenue for the energy to come through and I believe that you know the stronger the energy is that's coming through um, the more that it will have impact the more that it will spread and um, and accelerate what we're going through because I think the most important um, thing to remember is that we want to see everybody come forward and step out of all the pain and suffering that that, that's in and around the, the, the 3D experience. We, we've been told that at the stage of the shift that we're at that we're pretty much done with that, so we have the option if we want to um, to collectively step step forward out of that, that um, the more horrendous aspects of the 3D experience. And so I think the best thing there that's available is, is the idea that, you know, um, to, to find, find ideas to, to go with, find things to work with, that allow you to um, to be the best you that you can be, and and through that to, to help others to see and to lift, so that they can actually get themselves out of the situation that they that they're in. Because there's it seems to me from what I've heard, there's no longer a need to stay in that. We, there was there was a reason, and it was part of our evolution. But the whole idea of shifting dimensions is, is that it, it being being back in that stuff's now optional. So, so how can we stand by and just watch others and continue to struggle on it without doing what we can to help them? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely agree. And one uh, one thing that you said that was interesting too is is that the information comes through eighty twenty and and reversed way. When I was saying that the information was very filtered in the beginning, I don't necessarily mean that it was wrong. I don't mean oh, yeah, that it yeah. was incorrect. It was just painted with more of my views, of my thoughts and beliefs. Um, it was it was the same energy, the same information. It's obviously the same treb. It was just painted in a color more rob, and that was the uh, issue in that way. I want to remind all the callers who are just tuning in uh, that you are listening to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. We're sitting here talking with caller Mark um, about consciousness channeling, integration of consciousness, and, and how channeling is affecting not just the people who are involved with it, but all the collective. Um, if you want to join in this conversation, uh, please hit one on your phone, one on your Skype, and this lets us know that you would like to join the conversation as well. One thing, too, Mark, that you said that was very interesting uh, oh, mm-hmm. also, callers can call in area code 347-308-8788. One thing, too, that you said uh, that was very interesting is when we get that excited, when we start connecting to the parts of us that make us excited about channeling or whatever it is, we mm-hmm. draw people in, even if their excitements don't match. Mm-hmm. It is just the excitement itself that brings people forward, that brings people's curiosity to why you're so excited. That's something that Treb's talked to me about since day one, is how can uh-huh. we help the people around us the best? And the way we do that is by living into the best us that we can be. And not the best us by society standards, not by standards of any one person group orientation, but to step into what we truly are. Um, a mm. lot of people say, well, you know, I'm excited to... Uh, yell at the top of my lungs obscenities and some people are like well that's not useful to the collective well it doesn't have to be (laughs) useful to the collective if your excitement is there just by you being excitement you emanate an energy that can motivate others who need that excitement or who are hungry for that excitement to activate that excitement in themselves so by yelling obscenities you can trigger someone right next to you who wants to go help homeless children? Because and even sure. those things are two so such different energies. The vibration of love, the vibration of excitement, is all the same vibration. And by just being in vicinity of someone who's excited, who's loving, who's caring, that energy can register 
um, so much activation in many other people in many different ways. So I think that's a brilliant yeah. point. Um, now, yeah. when it comes down... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add to that, um, Rob. The way that I'm, I'm seeing it, the idea is that when you when you get really excited, um, it, it, it does it lifts the energy, of course, you know, and, and it may be a loving excitement or it may it may be some other type of excitement. But when a person comes across you and, and you're, you're, you have that sort of intense passion about anything, it gives them a chance to to um, to dip into it a little bit, and and they might come away saying, I passionately don't want that. I um that 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 gives me a chance to reflect on on what this guy's into and what I want's far away from that. So it helps them to define what they really want. So they may not um, be into what you're into, but you've actually given them an opportunity to define what they are into by contrasting it, and so that might lead them a little bit closer to their own passion. Well, absolutely, absolutely, just. Just by knowing that they can be excited about something can register that absolutely. That's that's something that's very uh, well put. And and one thing I I wanted to make sure to let people know too. When I expressed earlier that me and Mark are on talking about a certain subject tonight is a freestyle um, show mm-hmm. tonight. There's not any topic that you have to talk about. You don't have to talk about what we're talking about. You can talk about anything. Um, uh, whether it's a question, a comment, you need advice, you'd like to give someone else advice, anything that's experienced, anything goes tonight. That's what the freestyle shows are about. Um, what I'm going to do, Mark, we do have a couple other people with their hands up. Oh, I'm going to set you on hold. No and if uh, any uh, hands quit being raised afterwards, I'll come right back to you and we'll finish this chat up on this conversation too, brother. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, mate. All right. Love you, brother. Bye. Love you, too. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for all calling in, raising your hands, wanting to chat. We'll take the 503 area code. 503, who do we have with us this evening? I think that's me, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. How we doing, bud? We're doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Having fun. This is an excitement of myself. Um... This is a, a great excitement. I love doing the show. I love communicating with people who are excited about what they're doing and, and who are commonly interested in all things. Um, so I am definitely excited to hear what you want to talk about tonight. <laughs> awesome. Well, I am definitely loving that you still do this show. I don't think there's another show actually out there like it. Well, that's yeah, that's the, that is a very, very uh, a great... <laughs> perception that you've got there. This show is very <laughs> unique in its own self. Um, every person who has something to say and express will always say that in their own energetic way. And that's something that I was complimented on on the last interview I gave is, you know, you really make the show your own. Your heart energy resonates through yeah. the entire show. So I am glad that I have the format and the opportunity to share my excitements with things like this because I'm telling you what, the, the this network itself has tons of great hosts, tons of great shows, tons of great opportunities, and the callers that we have on this network, and from my own perception, especially on this show, because I spend time dealing with the callers on the show, it's just we have the best callers in the world here in this network. I have to agree with that. So much great questions, um, topics covered, anything like Anything like that. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to take a drink while you go ahead and and uh, tell us yeah, what's on your something. mind and heart tonight. Well, um, I uh, I remember last time I talked to you, I uh, reached this state where I just love everything. And uh, I think a lot of it came from uh, practicing uh, astral projection. And... Um, while in this state of astral projection, um, I would just find friends, people I cared about, and just love them, and just, you know, just spread positive energy. And in doing that, um, I became aware of this um, uh, heart chakra, um, this kind of uh, effect it does when I do that, and when I emulate that, you know, 
not natural. I can like perpetuate my perpetuate myself into this extreme, extreme euphoric, um, positive, just love the crap out of everybody and everything around me. Just smile cemented on my face. Like I'm on drugs, quite honestly. It feels like I'm on drugs. And uh I remember uh Arde was mentioning something about that and uh it's funny because it's been really, really great, but um um in being in that state I've learned uh um I don't know how to uh which angle to avoid this. Um I guess you could say I completely uh got a speck of dirt in the engine and I came crashing down and uh I had no idea what was wrong with me. I I actually thought I was going insane because I was in such a high, high euphoric, um, intense state of love and I just came just like literally like someone just grabbed me through the air and just slammed me on the ground and uh in where that heart chakra was where I would, you know, focus and emulate that energy to increase just that high feeling. Um, I was feeling the inverse. It felt like someone took like an industrial like cave power drill and it was all muddy and just drilling it through my heart and it was extremely, extremely painful and um, had no idea what was going on. It like came out of left field and uh, I just started digging. I was like, what's going on? Am I, am I going insane? Like, I have no idea what's, why am I so depressed and sad out of nowhere like that? I, am I being punished for being so happy? I, I don't understand. And I started, uh, I just started digging deeper within myself. I started realizing that uh, as, as I was getting in these higher states, um, there's people and things in my life I had to let go that on some level I didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, address and acknowledge. And I knew I was going to have to leave them behind to uh, exist more in this positive state that I kind of recently discovered. And uh, I just got, it's just like, I, I kind of just didn't want to be in this positive state anymore because I wanted to stay where my friends were at and some people that I've loved really close, some even like family members. And uh, it was such an intense, um, such an intense and dark feeling. And I think I had no choice but to just, the moment I, I saw it, looked that in the eye and saw exactly what it was, I started to feel lighter and better again. But it was hard because it, like, as I get into this state that's more intense, I become a little bit more psychic. Um, so I become increasingly more psychic as I'm more into this higher state. And I become aware of other things that I didn't know about myself. And um, I think, like, I was just trying to ignore some of it. And uh, some of that had to do with me having to move. But a lot of it just letting go of where I am now and going and starting a new chapter and I just didn't want to do it, and uh, it's funny because the day, the next day after that, your um, you channeled artist, an artist said something exactly like, like on that. He's like, a lot of you are experiencing like extreme positive and negative energy, and uh, <laughs> I just like couldn't say that. And like, Jesus Christ, was that what that was? Like, I <laughs> I was for sure thinking I was going insane. Like. I've never been hit so left field from something like that, and I don't think maybe even ever. But, um, yeah, I feel like I'd share that, because I, I know, like, as we are all growing together and reaching this higher state of closer of knowing what love is, um, and very similar to what Bashar says, too, the small speck of dirt in the engine will bring everything to a grinding halt. And so yeah. you clean it out and rev it back up. And, uh, man, my engine came to a complete full stop, and it was intense. And, uh, you know, 
I'm sure I can't be the only one who's having that if artists said that. Um, but I just felt like sharing that because it's been a beautiful journey because I'm learning of different ways about love and I'm learning more so uh, part of the letting go was I I didn't want to let go of someone that I loved and I realized I was um, putting conditions, I guess you could say, hard to describe. I didn't want to lose this person. I realized that I needed to uh, um, love them regardless and whether they're, you know, with me or they're far away from me or they're not always in my life. And when I started doing that, you know, the, you know, the weight started lifting. I started feeling lighter again. But it's just kind of um, showing me that there's just a lot more to love than I even have definitions for or haven't even created definitions for yet because I've never experienced these different angles of perspective on it. Because you know a lot, a lot of it has to do where you're just taught to you meet someone you like, and then you love them exclusively. And if you know someone does something that's not faithful, then it's socially acceptable to just hate that person, and you know you're okay to hate them. But that's not really uh, that's not really the nature of how love really is. Is what you know I'm being taught. And it's really beautiful, actually. Well, it's amazing, too, that you're talking about this. Art of um, great, great energy, huge energy, um, very in-depth what he comes to say. And one of the things he said that he uses the terminology, you are loved, because mm-hmm. of its profound reaction with us as humans what Treb's always talked about from the beginning of time and what Aradip has always talked about, what a lot of these channelers are either slightly touching on or not talking about at all, is something that I feel is the most instrumental key in love itself, is to understand that you are love. And that's something that all channelers will let you know if they're entities yeah. who, are, who are connected to their loving self. But the one thing that people don't talk is the um, importance, the profound importance of loving yourself. And this is something that so many people are not getting to at this time, but it's something that they need. And this is why I think artist energy is so profound and it hits people so hard because he lets you know that you are loved and it's most important to love yourself because if you can't love yourself, you're not allowing any other energy to come in. If you don't love yourself fully, which includes the non-judgment of yourself, which includes um, accepting yourself, which includes making sure that your benefit of whatever energy you're putting into, that it's for the benefit of you as well as for others, not just for others, not just giving away yourself and sacrificing energy and, and all of these things. That's why that energy from art is so profound. And I love the fact um, that during that interaction you heard what you needed to hear from art because that energy is... Yeah so so deep and so profound and the one thing that people don't integrate enough in my opinion or at least from the people I interact with is a lack of self love or a lack of full acceptance in themselves and no, nobody can love unconditionally nobody mm-hmm. can love another uh, or the entire world unconditionally you can love people unconditionally you can love things unconditionally most can't love themselves unconditionally and no not a lot of people can love everything and everyone unconditionally. And the terms that we use here on our planet as unconditional love misses the mark by quite a bit. And what you're doing now, I feel, is you're trying to integrate your consciousness as deeply in as you can to what true unconditional love is. And that's why you're feeling all these big, big energies. That's why you're feeling all this deep profoundness and synchronicities is because your sense of love has expanded the definition of what unconditional love truly is. You finally found that unconditional love doesn't mean 
oh, I love you, and, and even if times are rough, we could still make this work as friends or as lovers or whatever. Yours is like, wow, if you tried to kill me in my sleep, I could still love you the same depth and level, and that is a part where most people can't achieve, and just trying to go for that. And this is something that Treb has put a lot of importance on in the years of his teachings, just by attempting to find your version of unconditional love, you expand. You don't just expand slightly. You exponentially expand your consciousness because the hunt of unconditional love is what the fourth density is all about. Once you get done with that fourth density consciousness, then and only then can you truly unconditionally love in the same fashion that these entities are teaching us to try to. And the journey of unconditional love is what lands us in the growth and expansion and entire experience that we're having in this life. And probably the next couple dozen lives that we spend, we will find ourselves in lives with highly expanded ability to love in an unconditional manner that is truly consistent with the definition of unconditional love. And that's the beautiful thing, I think. Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting uh, what you are saying, too, in the beginning of that. Um, that's actually been one of the other pieces that um, was kind of shown to myself as I was digging deep within myself of that whole... Uh, um, know, falling, falling, coming to a grinding halt, um, learning to uh, begin to love myself as much as I love every, as I'm now starting to love everybody and convert that towards myself and love myself as, as basically a third person perspective, like basically love myself like I'm loving everybody else and somehow I'm like, in a feeling where I told that it'll just become explosive at that point if I even come somewhat close to that. Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's that point of expansion. Of love. And it's interesting for me and my own personal experience that unconditional love always eludes me slightly, even in the people I love the most. It still eludes me slightly. And in that slight alluding in that slight uh, missing the mark comes mm -hmm. at first a lot of pain and a lot of oh my god I can't live up to what I want to be but the yeah. more you let go of that the more you find that the expansion of love that you're in is actually uh, expanding that definition past and beyond what you truly thought and that grinding to a halt thing, I think, happens with so many people who are truly trying to find their journey when they are connecting to the parts of themselves that are clogging up the machine, like you said. That part really does show expansion. A lot of people have had their dark nights of the soul. They've had their experiences in depression, um in addiction and anger and violence and all of those things and it's usually when that gun gets in there but some people do it after they have become aware of themselves and the belief systems that they want to integrate and some of them have just recently been able to do that even after their enlightenment and that part is is kind of a rough balance because when you become aware of how reality works when you become aware of your own thoughts and beliefs being the dictator well not dictator but the, but the framework for our new experience then it really puts that responsibility back on you and that's something that myself and George used to talk about a lot on the show is having that feeling of responsibility for all of the things that happen in your life but what I found is that through responsibility or, or what we perceive as responsibility that doesn't have to be a negative experience. It doesn't have to be something where we completely shut ourselves down and say, man, I really screwed this up, man. I am just horrible. I can't do anything right. Um, that lack of self-love, again, is the perpetuator and the motivator in those specific uh, arenas of, of growth. Yeah. I am very, very uh, just, I don't know what the word is, 
as if you were to look at all the stars and realize they're all universes and containing plants and life in themselves and just being like kind of odd in the beauty of all of it, how majestic it is with how all of us seem to be, uh, you know, going through this together and discovering these things while we're kind of riding on the same way side by side with each other, you know, as opposed to, um, you know, other things will probably be taught as we progress later on. But I find it's very special that a lot of us are, you know, are somewhat in close of experience of us having these realizations about, you know, definitions of love are not truly accurate. And we're now um, discovering that. And, you know, we're, we're kind of like all uncovering a lot of this together. And, you know, the teachers that you channel are, I, I know for sure they, they know that, that they're giving us these lessons when we get to, you know, when we finish this one class of understanding. And it's just very amazing to me how, uh, how much it seems like a lot of us are kind of reading the same book right now and we're all really close so like to go on the same page with the story that we're all learning. Well, absolutely, and and that's the best thing is finding people who you can share this beautiful and wonderful experiences, and that's another avenue of the show that I've really enjoyed is being able to find like-minded people. Uh, Aaron, as much as I love you and love talking to you, I do got a couple more callers with their hands up, so I want to try to get to everyone who's there tonight. I love you, brother, and thank you for sharing your heart and your mind with us this evening. It's been wonderfully expansive, as always, brother. All right, love you, too. All right. Love you. Bye. Okay, everybody. Sorry about that. My my voice went out. Uh, my mic was muted. I, I am sorry for that. I was basically saying I want all of you to remember that uh, tonight's a freestyle call-in show. You can talk about anything and everything you want. Area code 347-308-8788. Um, I'm uh, very grateful for all of you who have called in. Um, thank you also, Aaron. That was very expansive, as always. Uh, great, great expansion, great heart, great experience sharing. Mark as well. We're going to get to our next person in the studio with their hands up. Wonderful, wonderful woman who I have worked with uh, in long periods of time, who's a very good friend. We would like to introduce Jessica. Jessica, are you there with us? I'm here. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing really awesome. Oh, great. <laughs> So, uh, do, do you do you think um, I should introduce some of the interesting stuff that's been uh, going on around well, here? With <laughs> yeah, I mean that's yeah. If you feel like sharing that, that's a, that's a whatever you'd like to talk about. Okay. Well, I guess I'll preface it by um, saying, yeah, we I've I've been working with you probably for about a year now. I think. Um, Actually, I think in February it'll be a year, and it was just such a, a fluky way that uh, I found you and Treb. And it's interesting that the other day you had the conversation on Facebook about the uh, uh, show on the Saturday, and the conspiracy theory uh, information that's within that is actually how I eventually found my way to where I am now, which I thought that was pretty prolific. I think you mu- muted your mic again. Yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm sorry. Uh, I <laughs> I thought you were still going to continue on uh, with a no. part of the story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> since working with you, it has almost been a year. That's crazy, hasn't it? Yeah, so basically what how what happened was is that I had um I saw something that just it 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 made me think and I started to do some googling and the googling brought me to as I call them the tinfoil hat conspiracy sites and such 
And there's such a myriad of different, it's not just conspiracies, it's also this new age, there's also uh, spiritualism, channel, it's, it's, it's a very, very big, a uh, lot of topics. So anyway, so as I was like going through some of these things, I started to see... Uh, you know, information about uh, Anunnaki and uh, reptilians and this, that, the other thing. And everything was on a very negative type of uh, vibe, uh, draconian, and it just didn't resonate with me at all. And I just, it, it, I never thought of that in terms of um, malevolence. I'm like, I, I don't understand. I don't think I could imagine all reptilian type of things being malevolent. I literally went to Google and I typed in benevolent reptilians in quotations. I hit enter and your Treb channeling site was the first one to come up on the Google, on the Google machine. And I clicked on it and I, that's how I found Treb. And I'll be honest, it took me about a month or so of like listening through your videos to, to you know, to take the plunge to actually set up a session. But um, but I did, and definitely it's it's been a roller coaster ever since. I'm sure you can uh, you can attest. Oh yes, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> so so with me, so I you know I made my I made the first connection with Trip, and it was. It, it was, uh, I was so nervous at first. And, uh, you know, once I started talking to him, every, all the pieces of the puzzle started to fall into place. And uh, it was, it was, I was having different experiences than what other, what folks who would normally have um, uh, sessions with Treb. Uh, my questions were different. Our interactions were different. It was, as you could probably again attest to, it was, it was almost on a, on a, on a different level. But that, sparked me to start looking into things more in depthly and uh, you know the uh the densities the the dimensions your master density class things like that looking into all of that is you know, I started to you know put my nose in the book and go through everything in the process of that uh I was meditating I was teaching myself how to meditate and Treb told me he said if you want to connect with you know, your higher self is that the other thing you should start meditating and and so that's when I did I started doing um some hemisync I also was doing the uh the binaural audio uh with the different sound waves and and I was having interesting effects with that and one day I was sitting there and I was meditating and I just put it out there I said is there anybody out there that's listening to me right now and all of a sudden my I guess uh heart center filled up and it was a bizarre feeling. I was like, it, it caught me off guard. It was kind of like an okay. And uh, from that point on, I was able to do like yes or no questions. And a yes, uh, a question that would answer yes, my heart center would fill up. A, answer, a question that would be answered no, I'd get no reaction, no response. So that's how I was doing this rudimentary type of uh, channeling. I happened to see, was, is, is it Awaken Within? Yes, it is. Right. She's the one it who's is. done all those drawings, yep. Exactly. She just happened to talk about, uh, talk about just no such things as coincidences or whatever. She had, like, the, that day I was looking at her site on Facebook, and she said, uh, I'm opening up to doing drawings. I haven't done it in a while. I haven't had the time. I'm doing it now. So I'm like, ooh, let me find out what's going on. And I sensed her request. And within 24 hours, she got back to me and gave me, and validated the information I was yes knowing with, with this entity. And uh, she sent me back with a, a, a picture, a name, and a, um, and a message. So I was completely blown away. So it turns out that uh, I've been connecting to a fourth density yit uh, who was whose planet was uh, destroyed in another timeline, as uh, Trevor put it, uh, that and was born on a ship and uh, has basically been does not have a planet of his own. So I 
I, I made a uh, connection with Treb again, where he brought uh, Vor, that's his name, through so I could speak to him in words and not this yes-no thing. Now, I guess you could probably <laughs> shed some light on how uh, how the sessions with Vor are a little different than some of the other sessions that you've had. <laughs> a different <laughs> understatement. Every time I channel another entity besides Treb, uh, Treb comes in very custom to my physical body, very custom to working with my energy. Um, so everything is beautiful when it comes to that. But when he starts connecting to these different entities, each one of their energies flows through my body just a little differently. <laughs> and with Vor, he is probably the craziest one I've got so far. Uh well, there's been some ones that have said crazy stuff, but physically <laughs> and energetically is a little crazy. Um, so far, since we've connected with him, he's tried to pull some of my eyelashes out. I think there was something in my eye bothering him, and he kept picking at it. Well, you have to, <laughs> well, you have to preface it by when you came out of the session, uh, you you opened your eyes, and Kalina was holding your hands and sitting right in front of you, holding your hand <laughs> in the in the dark, and there was a and T-shirt over the monitor. <laughs> There's a T-shirt literally over the monitor. Kalina is holding my hands by the uh, higher wrist, <laughs> <laughs> as to maybe uh, uh maybe to contain uh, or uh, I have no idea. <laughs> yes, it, it was um. It was an experience, and I get up, and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Kalina sits there and tells me, as well as Jessica, about the eyelash thing. And apparently, he kept trying to open my eyes up, and this light was so uh, bright for him that he was having trouble adjusting to light, so he kept blinking my eye, and I think that's what caused the eyelash irritation, because the eyes were blinking so rapidly and so quickly. Trev just said, yes, that's exactly what was happening, so... The lights had to go off, and every time he comes in, too, now, if it's during the day, you got to get the blind shut, computer off, all that good, fun stuff. So, oh, it's, it's uh, don't definitely. Forget, don't forget him staring at the cat. Yes, the cat called the cat aloof. Um, <laughs> also, was bit on the elbow by a cat. That, that, was, the, that was the funniest thing. It, as, as I've um, been able to deepen my connection, well, it turns out that he's um, my... Uh, twin soul uh my twin flame he's actually the higher version or connected to my husband as i've discovered since my journey since dealing with all of this and then learning what my role is um it turns out that uh my oversoul uh shot out a fractal which is me currently right now in the here and now that is go is currently branching off into the creation of a new Oversoul. So actually, from how I understand it, where I am right now in the here and now, I am my higher self, and I don't have a connection. I, as Treb put it, I, I purposely disconnected from my Oversoul for what reason? I'm not sure entirely. I think it's probably a learning experience. But I have groups uh, of individuals and entities that prior to incarnation made a, a pre-existing agreement that they would act as my as my uh oversoul uh so when this, when people would connect to their higher selves they would connect to their higher selves for me I'm connecting to uh other entities who were who were there to help which ironically has turned out to be Treb uh was one of them which that of course leads into you because you and he are uh the same, basically. Kalina is in there as well. I guess that would also include Ardif, uh, too. And now I have uh, Vor, who is a separate entity connected to my husband uh, and, and his oversoul, I guess, is how it is. And I'm still learning. There's still some more people cop- popping in and in and out and, and, and everything. But as I've deepened my connection, uh, you know, now I, I can lucidly dream and we can have conversations and this, that, the other thing. But the last time, uh, oh, and his connection too, we have to give him a, a heads up. Treb tells him definitively, do not do anything to, what does he call you, the host body? Yes. <laughs> do not do anything to the host body. 
but he's able to settle into your body better uh, every time that we subsequently do it. Uh, but the last time was he says to me at the end of the session, I don't know how long he was tolerating it. I don't even know if that would be the right word. He says to me, is it customary for this feline to have its teeth on my arm? <laughs> and I had to, I, I, I did it. I was like, what? And he said, and I said, oh, is, is the cat biting you? And he's, he's, yes, the cat is biting me. I'm like, and I start apologizing profusely. I'm like, I, I have no idea what the intent of the cat is, but I'm like, does it hurt? And he's like, no, it doesn't hurt. I said, okay, all right, that's good. If it doesn't hurt, then they're just testing you out and tasting you or something. But I, then I gave him specific, <laughs> specific instructions. I said, do not cat, scratch the cat's butt because then you will probably wind up getting bitten even more, if not scratched. So, uh, but, they, but it's hysterical that in numerous times, again, the cat, uh, the cat gravitates over to him while you're channeling. You there? My mic issue, yeah, my mic issue uh, is going on again. Yes, you're absolutely right. The cat is always reacting in one way or another to every entity that comes through. They feel that resonance. They feel the vibration. Um, they feel, for some reason, that it's very important, uh, or the cat does, feels. And I had the same reaction with my dogs. When I lived uh, at my old house, my dogs would always do that. Um, one of the little chihuahua, who's about as big as my hand, plus his head, um, would always, <laughs> I'd wake up from the session and have him cuddled up right in my stomach and chest. So animals are very sensitive to that, for sure. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because, uh, you know, I I can connect uh, energetically to, to Vor, and when we do make that connection, uh Kind of like I guess how is it, how it's an extension of you, how your animals that are around you can sense the energy. I, I inevitably my dog will be laying next to me in bed, and uh, he'll start going into a dream state where he's, you know, running in his sleep. It's like clockwork every time that when I make that connection. So it must be something like jumping off from one to another that perhaps Vore is connecting it to him or something, too. I don't know. It's one of my questions I have to ask him because i got to tell him my dog is almost 17. we got to give him a break. <laughs> Aww. Absolutely. <laughs> Isn't it funny, though, uh, when when Vore would connect to you while you were out showing him the horses and the chickens, oh, God. Yeah. What, what, did they ever react? Uh, not so, well, what, back then when I originally did that, uh, the connection wasn't as, as strong, uh, as it is now. And to be honest with you, I haven't tried it since, but I, I did, cause I find it's hard for me to go out there and get into a meditative state because something's always going on. <laughs> I, have to, I can't get as calm and relaxed as I'd like to. So it's almost very superficial. It's almost like, okay, I'll stand next to the horse and I'll project, I'll say, listen, you know, here, I'm standing next to the horse, can you feel this horse's energy, and I'll get the response of yes. But it's not as deep or profound that with the dog who would be, as I said, sleeps in the bed next to me, and that's usually when I do most of my communication is uh, right before I fall asleep. Uh, So it's not as much, but he is fascinated with second density uh, creatures because he doesn't have a planet that he can call his own, so he doesn't. Ha- so he's he finds everything here so interesting that he wants to learn all about it over here. And I said, sure. <laughs> well, that's that's something interesting you said right before you go to sleep. Are you aware of the reason why that connection's mostly made right before then? Uh, well. Usually what I do is, um, because I've always been a a, a strong, um, I've always been able to lucid dream. And that, that, again, that's another one of those things in my journeys that I discovered that I I could do before I learned exactly what it was. Um, It's the, I do that, it's because it's the quietest time of the day. Plus, when I start to go into that dream state, I can actually, I've actually had verbal 
um, I guess almost like how you would refer to it as conscious channeling uh, situations. It's it scared the heck out of me because I was in like a half sleep state and you hear a voice in your head and I like literally jumped. But um, it, I just think it's the, the right, the easiest time to to do so. That's the only thing I can think of. So it's like an audio. Uh, I can't remember what they call it, audio clairvoyancy or something, or auto buoyancy. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I've been. I mean, again, I'll do the energetic yes or no. So I'll I'll ask a question like um, that, like how I figured out who he was and such. Uh, you know, I, I asked him, "Are you a yit?" And I, he gave me a yes. I I figured out. Um, you know, would you be considered younger than I am in your in you know your lifespan and you shot me yeah so it turns out he's like a college kid like that type of age. <laughs> so that's the reason yeah. why he's like pulling on everything um <laughs> so uh but yeah, I teams guess, do that don't they <laughs> yeah and um and that's why you know this this he's it's interesting because he's learning too you know he's fourth density uh he's here um that that time that that ufo that you videotaped that you put up on your uh, Facebook page? Yes. That was them. Yes, that was their crew. <laughs> that was their crew, uh, that, which is pretty crazy. Again, going into the whole connection of pre, pre-arranged um, uh, agreements, pre-incarnation agreements, that you know, there's a big picture and everybody's uh, interrelated somehow. He couldn't do it here because, as he explained, he can't get down low enough without – because uh, I'm so close to an airport, so he shot out that way. Sure, and better. Dead. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out a little ways in in that, but you see the connection um, not just through yourself and through Vor and through myself and Treb, but you see uh, the most obvious connection with Treb and Vor having both of their selves um, connecting to one concept that they're both the same race just in different timelines or different I don't know how that really works I never dug into it but having two sets of yits Um, and actually that brings me to a caller question or a written in question Um, Kalina Angel from Michigan (laughs) wanted to ask if you were too legit to yit (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) I know (laughs) Yeah, and occasionally when he starts pulling out your eye, your eyelashes, I, I will refer to him as a yit head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you got that joke because that's uh, most uh, people who won't get that joke are definitely not around in I'm, the late 80s, early 90s. I'm 42. So. I'm 42. I exactly know it. I'm too legit to yit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to throw that in because that was very that was highly... Good. Interest uh, from Kalina, so I <laughs> make sure you knew that. <laughs> well, her, her so, cat is aloof. <laughs> and her cat is definitely aloof. So I guess my question to you then would be, out of all of these experiences that you've had, what what is it bringing to you? What is it teaching you? What are you getting from this experience? Or, or have you found that answer yet? Uh, Well, again, I learned that uh, that I am currently in the state of higher self. Uh, so in actuality, it's kind of like how Treb explained it, or rather when I speak to Treb, he kind of just validates what I'm thinking or what I what I believe to be. I don't know if he's just being nice, but it resonates with me. So uh, when he when he validates it, then I know that I'm, you know, on the right path. Basically, what I'm learning is that uh, – that I am in the higher self now and my role eventually will be to be like how he is a spiritual advisor to uh, lower density entities. So as we're moving from third to fourth, uh, 3D to 5D, um, there will be second densities moving to third and they might just like we are reaching out to higher uh, entities, I might be the one on the receiving end of that phone call, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, absolutely. And one of the things, I guess, uh, that excites me so much about all of these connections and contacts that a lot of people are making right now, 
um, yourself included, is that we get to peer into separate parts of ourselves, whether they're connected to us literally through oversouls, whether we're disconnecting from the oversoul, no matter what the experience is, the interactions between all of us are teaching us all great lessons. And even if the great lesson is to laugh at an alien pulling out your eyelashes, then laugh <laughs> about it. I mean, for realistically, experiences are so important for the oversoul, uh, for yourself, for anything, that the smallest and in your own mind, least um, profound experiences are moving. And, and something Treb wanted me to tell you too, Jessica. Okay. Um, as as you were talking earlier, he just reminded me to tell you huh. that you said you know when it, whether he's just uh, agreeing to be nice or appease. He <laughs> said that every single one of us have our own truth, and in those truths we will always find bigger questions and bigger answers because of the questions, but he will never be uh, concerned of your feelings or thoughts to not tell you his perspective also. So you're sharing perspectives with him when he's confirming how you feel. Okay. And, you know, now that I think about it, he's actually, uh, you know, he doesn't say he doesn't say yes all the time. He actually, uh, he he does, like, reword things in such a way. But it, it's interesting. He's he's just a good one to bounce off of. Uh, oh, and if people don't know, so how tall is Treb? About seven and a half foot. All right. Yeah, so, and he's green. Yeah, he's a blue-green, absolutely. Yeah, so Vor in his fourth density race, uh, his they are about six foot, maybe six foot two, six foot three. They are a dark purple, uh, same same look. Like if you were going to look at him, he just looks like a smaller version of Treb. Deep purple skin, uh, orange eyes. And uh, oh, and the other thing that's really neat, I forgot to, to say, as I've become deeper connected into things, and I had spoken to him about this once before, when I'm in a meditative state, he'll flash from what I thought they were images, uh, almost like x ray type of images, black and white images, as I have my eyes closed. And they were of uh, entities, I guess you can say, and it kept. And one, they were like feline type of entities. It was a uh, Sasquatch entity. I thought that he was projecting to me to ask me what I know about them. Turns out what I'm actually doing is he's currently either looking at that particular entity or is in a connection with that particular entity, and I'm seeing it almost through like a... Um, uh, a, a darkened, like as if I were like in a darkened room, I'm seeing like the silhouette. So he would, so um, I would close my eyes and we would connect and I would see a gray. Well, I thought that he would have been asking me information about, well, I don't know anything about them. Turns out, and I just had this validated, that in actuality he's communicating with a hybrid and I'm almost kind of seeing through his eyes, if you could believe that. Well, absolutely. That's that's the the beautiful part. That's sometimes when I get to experience Treb the same way. It's he never shows me something from his per, uh, first person perspective, but something that a lot of people don't know. Even the even if they followed my work from almost the beginning that one of the first times uh, I connected with Treb, probably in the first six months of connecting with him every day, um, he let me have an experience in his physical body. He allowed Ooh. my consciousness to integrate into his physical body. He showed me what that felt like. And that was one of the most profound experiences I had with him in the beginning. I wasn't, there was a bunch of other yet standing around, they were kind of like looking at me, and I could tell that they were on that curiosity mode. <laughs> um, they were still very loving and very accepting, but they were very curious. I don't know. I have the feeling that just because some people feel a little volatile uh, in, in humanity, in the human race, they, they were kind of concerned. But that one experience was the closest I've had to it. But I believe that when we were talking earlier and I talked about 
the amount of time I would spend in a channel state with Treb and then other things I would be seeing these projections of entities, I feel that although I know I'm in my astral body, although I know I am experiencing those things myself, those are probably, just like what you said, a projection of something that um, he's experienced or that he's seen, so it was something that he wanted to share with me in that way. That's exactly, that's exa- well, you know why all those yits were probably standing around staring at you, right? They were probably, you were probably pulling on his eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel, yet? <laughs> uh, now they know uh, my pain, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Poor boar. <laughs> I know. It's like the brunt of our jokes, but he knows it. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> Kalina said it wasn't that because they don't have eyelashes. <laughs> That's what she has <laughs> tried a long time ago. <laughs> oh. All right, so then you were you were doing something that they were like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so there you uh, go. Okay. I, well, I I am excited to have uh, you talk about and share your experiences because all these experiences um, help other people find out what's going on with themselves. A lot of people have um, these profound and weird experiences, but they don't talk about them because they are weird and because they don't know what it could be. Um, I mean, it's just to hear from another person that they're having similar things going on in their lives is is very profound. So sharing that, I'm very grateful for you wanting to and willing to share. Um, I hate to do this, but I've got to jump off. I just realized I haven't done announcements, and I'm going to have a minute left after I hang up with you here. So I love you very much, Jessica, and thank you again for coming on. All righty. I'll talk to you later. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. I want you to stay tuned. This is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with your host, Rob Gossie. We are here every Wednesday, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, Daylight Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, join in. Next week, we're doing the Treb Channeling and Artif Channeling special. Be here. Ask your questions. Do what you wish. We're going to send you guys out tonight with some wonderful announcements from the network done by our uh, Sunday host, Karen Newman. So enjoy, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness, and here's what's coming up on the Enlightenment Evolution Networks 1 and 2, starting on Monday, October 27th, until Sunday, November the 2nd. Simply put, Rob Gauthier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN1, Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the Creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, and Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions, and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more about Daniel at his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. On Tuesday at noon, also 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandallmeyer and Rachel Archelaus for Radio Inspiration, Expression, and Abundance for their show, Soulfulpreneur. Spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their soul purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gauthier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers questions. On the third Wednesday, we'll have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their minds. 
Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him at TrubChanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob has two special announcements. Starting on Sundays from September 14th, TrubChanneling.com offers hour-long meditation classes. Please go to TrubChanneling.com to register. Another project near and dear to Rob's heart is the much-anticipated sequel to the groundbreaking film, Tuning In, called Tuning In Now. The movie will feature channelers such as Daryl Anka and Bashar, Lee Carroll and Cryon, and our very own Rob Gottier and Treb. Tuning In Now will explore the amazing work of today's top channels and how they are helping to awaken the consciousness of the planet. This film is in fundraising stages at the moment, and with a contribution for as little as $15 all the way up to $50, you can help make sure that this film is made. Please go to Indiegogo.com, that's Indie, I-N-D-I-E, Gogo, G-O-G-O, dot com, and type in the search, Tuning In Now Two. That's the number two. Tuning in now with the number two. On Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, join host Philip Malika with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip at the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and on YouTube. On Friday, The Earth Experience with your host, Kalina Angel. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experience on Earth. Kalina will help you to navigate and expand through the exciting confusions that we are manifesting as new 5D beings. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, join me for my show, About Oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and our realization of oneness. My guest on November the 2nd is Robert Atkinson, author of Mystic Journey, Getting to the Heart of Your Soul's Journey. Robert Atkinson is a Ph.D. and an internationally recognized authority in helping people to tell their life stories. He is the author of eight books, professor of human development and religious studies, and the director of the Life Story Center at the University of Southern Maine. He will be live taking callers' questions. If you would like to learn more about my upcoming guests, as well as see many videos of channelings and teachings, you can go to aboutoneness.com. On the Enlightenment Evolution Network 2... Join host Victoria Vives every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, hosting Earth Sky People Radio, your bridge between heaven and earth. Subjects will include planet Earth becoming part of an intergalactic society, star seeds and extraterrestrial life, living in oneness with one another, with Mother Earth, and with life beyond the Earth, the Interstellar Alliance, also known as the Galactic Federation of Life. Music, frequency, and sound healing, question and answer interviews, shamanism, ancestral wisdom, and the star nations, self sustainative and regenerative living, and much, much more. Please go to victoriavives.com forward slash radio where she has details about the show and the network. Victoria's guest on the 28th of October is Core Love, the man that's had 300 near death experiences. On Saturday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting the show, Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the the on-the-edge-of-our-seats show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pied Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never could get enough in investigating all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has studied these things for years. Join them as they cover all things in the human experience that just cannot be answered by anyone. Starting on Sunday, November the 2nd, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, The Resonance Intention, hosted by Neil and Soul Gar. The Resonance Intention show is dedicated to all things frequency and vibration. 
They showcase conscious musicians who infuse frequency into their music and have set out to uplift and raise the vibration of humanity through their music. They will have in-depth conversations with various artists about their passions, purpose, and personal journey that led them to where they are now. Additionally, they will routinely feature guests discussing the topics of free energy technology and the quantum modalities and technologies that are now coming into existence. The Resonance Intention is a platform for artists, musicians, and adventurers to increase awareness of their personal approach in order to contribute to the paradigm shift we are currently within. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are available to listen to again immediately after they air on playback. All right, back to the show. We love you all very, very much, and have a very good night. See you next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, Enlightenment Evolution Hour.